long-term sellers are really trying to take over. This chart continues to suggest to me that we could see Bitcoin go all the way back below $1,000 per Bitcoin, which seems pretty impossible. That is why I want to bring in Mike McGlone, Bloomberg Commodity Strategist. And Mike, what do you think of that chart? What do you think is next for Bitcoin? Oh, I have to agree with you about the 900. I'm kind of scared to say it, but the death cross kind of scares me. But that's what's happening. The market's turning down. It's switched, switched to a, a bear market. And I think in the next chart, we can really show you that. It's now, should I switch over there now? Well, this is the parabolic uptrend. So this is okay. a non-scale chart. So here yeah. we see just how parabolic it got. And then we couldn't, let's definitely take a look at your chart if we hop back into the Bloomberg. And I love this chart that you brought because it addresses some of the fundamental issues. And here we go. Yeah, the key thing, I think there's a few markets where their bell rings at the top, and Bitcoin's one of them. So here you see what happened. This is the beginning of futures. At the same time that futures came out, so in the white we have the Bitcoin, the blue we have futures launched, the CME launched their futures, and the CBOE launched their futures in December. At the same time, you can see in the yellow line, the Fed tightened. And that's a key negative for Bitcoin. Since the history of Bitcoin, as you can see, if we go back a little bit on the chart, here we had a Fed tightening, Bitcoin dropped down to below 1,000, and we go back here and we went to June, we had another tightening if Bitcoin drops again. So there's a correlation there. Bitcoin has a tendency to peak with Fed tightenings. So we got so a Fed tightening. Why yeah. do you think that is, Mike? Because this is so interesting because Bitcoin, you know, people debate whether it's even an asset class, but you're showing pretty convincingly that it is responding to Fed tightening. So why do you think that that's bad for uh, a quasi-asset class, uh, according to some? It's a good question. I, keep the, I think the key factor is Bitcoin was intended to be an alternative to the currency when the markets, when everybody was doing quantitative easing in 2009. Mm -hmm. Now it's the opposite. We're tightening. So we're restricting supply of dollars. We're increasing interest rates of those dollars. And Bitcoin doesn't have an interest rate. So to me, that's part of the key reason it's, it's, it's reverting and it goes down in Fed tightening. But now, since the last tightening, it's dropped 50%. That's great analysis. I really love that. So you're bearish clearly on Bitcoin, but you are bullish on gold and you have another great chart here with gold and why you're bullish. Well, one of the key reasons that I'm bullish on gold is when the Fed tightens, gold goes up because it, it backs up into it backs up into the tightenings. And what you see here is gold has basically been unchanged for a few years. It's been locking in a very narrow range here. L higher lows and the same highs. Gold's ready to break out. It's just a matter of time. It needs a good reason not to break out. And I don't know what that's going to be. I look at it like gold backed up to the last Fed tighten. Here we are. And now we pass the Fed tightening. It should go higher. For gold to break out higher, it needs a dollar to continue weaker, which has been happening and more inflation, which has been happening, and potentially a bottom in the VIX, which is mm. what I'm worried about. I'll believe this more once I see it, if okay. there's a potential breakout. But I love your analysis, especially on Bitcoin related to the Fed funds rate. So I totally feel like the guy on Bloomberg is holding lots of gold and no cryptocurrency. And it's interesting because that's the first time I've seen that pattern where when the Fed tightens interest rates or uh, raises interest rates, Bitcoin goes down in value. And the one issue I have is that obviously if there's a lot more money out in the, in the system, you know, you can use those dollars to obviously buy Bitcoin, thus bringing up the price. But the issue is leverage. So a lot of these assets, whether it's the stock market or if it's um, real estate, it's bought with leverage, where with crypto, obviously, there's places where you can go to get some sort of leverage, but most people buying this currency, are um, they're not buying it with leverage. And the other issue I have is the price of dollar, the dollars is getting weaker, but there's only a limited supply of cryptocurrency. Obviously, there's other currencies, but they're all going down. So... Once again, I don't know how this all works out. And then, like I said, he's stating that gold is a superior investment. But the issue with gold compared to cryptocurrency is how you move it, how it's stored, who controls it. You, you don't. I mean, if you really put in the, the tangible aspects of gold, other than wearing a bunch of uh, bling like a wrapper, I mean, crypto is superior. You can send it anywhere. There's lower fees. I mean, if you really want to go through the fundamentals, and like I said, this guy didn't really do that. He just took some charts, made some correlation with the charts. Uh, yeah, that's great. But it, at the end of the day, if you really do understand cryptocurrency and you understand you know, what it does, it's a superior asset class of gold. It's a better commodity. It's easier to transport. It's easier to send. It's easier to conduct business across the world. So... You know, they're saying that Bitcoin will hit a thousand. Um, 
I, I just don't believe it. And it might happen. They might be able to spook the weak investors. Um, and I just don't see the Winklevoss twins or any of the big uh, people that hold crypto selling their Bitcoin at a thousand. I, I, I really do feel like, um, you know, people like me where, you know, I have more than enough money um, in other investments where if Bitcoin hits $2, I don't give a shit. I'm not selling it. I'm I'm sitting on it and I'll I'll wait until it goes back to the moon and the only way I see Bitcoin really becoming worthless is that some other cryptocurrency um just completely surpasses Bitcoin, but once again that's it's just not going to happen overnight. So let me know what you guys think. Um I do believe that you should have both asset classes, so I am actually going to go buy some more gold. I already held gold. And I definitely own way more crypto than I own gold. So I'm going to try to fix that position and maybe add a little more gold because it does look like gold is going to break out. It was in a bear market because of all this quantitative easing. So um, I wouldn't sell any of your crypto. But if you don't own any kind of gold, I do feel like you need exposure to that access class. And if you've watched this channel, I preach diversification of your portfolio. But let me know what you guys think. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, and I will talk to you guys soon.